Remember how he told you that the Son of Man must be crucified and on the third day rise. Alleluia.
from the power of the enemy. Grant that all our sin may be drowned through daily repentance, and that day by day we may arise to live before you in righteousness and purity forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
murderers, liars, and thieves. Welcome to the world as we have made it by the fall into sin, by our rejection of God's law and our rebellion against him in the garden. What seems to be such a small thing, the fruit that we were told not to eat and we have eaten it, it comes as nothing to us, like stealing out of our mother's cookie jar when she said, you have to wait for dinner. What's the big deal? And yet, because of their sin, Adam and Eve are cast out of the garden. Because of the depth of what sin is in its rebellion against God, one of their sons will murder another. That is the world they created, the world we create. Not one that exists the way that God made it in its perfection, but the way it exists now as the way that we have twisted it by our rebellion and by the fall into sin, a planet of killers, liars, rapists, thieves, grave diggers. That's what we are. Digging our own grave since the beginning of time when God said, if you eat of it, you shall surely die. But we listen to the serpent instead. We dig our own graves with every instant of who and what we are because we are sinful. Of course we know that and how easy it is to say, I am a sinner. I am a poor, miserable sinner. I am a wretched sinner. But do we contemplate what it means every instant of our lives? The things we lust, the things we covet, the lies that we tell, the things that we've stolen, the people we've murdered, even if only it was in our thoughts, because we hated them and despised them. How easy it is for us to be killers, at least in our hearts and our minds, even for real with our hands, but all of us do it in our hearts and our minds. This is why Jesus died on the cross for our sin, for our powerlessness and weakness. But he comes into the world knowing that we will kill him because that's what we do. And how could we possibly stomach the existence of one of us who is without sin and perfect, who says insane things like love your enemies and pray for those who persecute and use you? Is it any wonder that he warned them when they wailed on his way to the cross? Weep for yourselves and for your children. If they do this when the tree is green, what will they do when it is dry? The time is coming, he said, when they will say to the rocks, fall on us, and to the mountains, cover us. This is most certainly true. Revelation tells us, and the prophets tell us, about that time coming when the rocks melt and the sea burns, when the world begins to collapse into its nothingness of the evil death that it has come to deserve. And they cry out against God. Revelation tells us each time a curse befalls on them. They cry out against God who caused them to curse. People that know that God is real at the day of judgment, who know that he is punishing them, and hate him anyway, because in the depth of our hearts, all the way back to Eden when we ate the fruit, what we really have been saying to God is, you have no right to be God. I am God. I will make my own decisions. I will make my own choices. I will find my own identity and choose my own path. And at the end, when the world is falling apart and the sores and the plagues and the scorpion stains and everyone cries out angry, angry against God, how dare you bring curses on us that we have richly deserved? Grave diggers. That's what we are. And left to our own devices, we bury ourselves in a hole and say, let the rocks cover us. And never once do we wonder in our sin, who will roll the stone away? Because that's the real metaphor. The women go to the tomb that morning, not expecting the resurrection. Even though Jesus has told them over and over and over again, he has told his disciples that he will suffer be betrayed into the hands of sinful men, and on the third day he will rise again, and despite all of that, nobody listens. Surprise, surprise, we haven't listened to him since the garden. Why would we listen then? They go to the tomb on that morning with everything they need to prepare his corpse for a belated proper burial. They go expecting the Lord of life to be dead, 
They go expecting the tomb to be full. And their only concern is, who will let them into this underworld, this land of the dead, that they might do some veneration to the body of yet another man who has gone the way of all flesh in the world to his grave. They are shocked by the resurrection. Despite everything he has taught and said and preached and been among them in his presence, they are shocked to find it. Who will roll the stone away to let us into the place of death that we may pay final tribute in death to one who is dead and what happens instead? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. What they find in the tomb and the other gospel readings give us a fuller picture. There are two angels, one at the head and one at the feet. He is risen. He is not here. They have the answer. Who will roll the stone away? They find the stone rolled away, and the answer to the question of who can do it is Jesus. God in the flesh who dies for the sins of the world and rises again gloriously to open the path to everlasting life. What they find instead is life in the tomb. They find the symbols of those things from the Old Testament that pointed to him. The Ark of the Covenant that had an angel on each end. The little box that is the womb of the Blessed Virgin that carries God inside. And the same two angels on each side of the mercy seat, which is the slab in the tomb. They come to the place where his bloody corpse was laying, and they find that he is not there. Everything is folded up nicely and neatly, and an angel at each side. We are people who constantly dig graves of the people that we hate and despise, the people with whom we war, the people, well, and we dig our own grave constantly and continually. And like the women that morning, before getting to the tomb, we do honor and tribute to death and forget about the author of life. How easy it is to think of him as not being risen and alive. They didn't realize it until they got there. Who will roll the stone away? Jesus will roll the stone away. He bursts from a tomb that is unable to hold him, and he tears us away from those graves and tombs that are unable to hold us, not against his divine power. God has come into the world and died for our sin and risen again. He is the one that uncovers all the graves and brings up the dead and judges the world on whom we will make the rocks fall as they cry out in anguish those that do not believe but he is the one that regenerates and transfigures and makes again and makes new and builds perfect again everything that is yet to come by the blood of his cross and by the emptiness of his tomb he is the one that rolls the rock away for us who only knew how to put it in place Jesus has come and we are delivered from our sin Alleluia Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.
Jesus Christ, the Son of God, yes. past the Lamb, who was, who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world, who was crucified for our transgressions and raised for our justification, who foretold your passion, saying, The Son of Man must be crucified and on the third day rise again, who destroyed death by dying and by rising to life again brought life and immortality to life, whose resurrection was first announced by an angel to the women, who appeared to Mary Magdalene and was worshipped by her, who revealed yourself to the two disciples on the Emmaus Road and made yourself known to them in the scriptures and in the breaking of bread, who appeared to the disciples, bestowing on them your peace and your spirit, who showed your wounded hands and thighs to the Apostle Thomas, that he too might believe. Who appeared to seven disciples on the Sea of Tiberias, bringing a miraculous catch of fish. Who appeared to Peter and to the twelve, to over five hundred disciples, to James and to all the apostles, and to Paul on the Damascus Road. Who commissioned your church to make disciples of all nations by baptizing and teaching them. By your glorious resurrection from the dead. By your victory over sin and death. By the majesty of your risen body. We poor sinners implore you. That we may daily die and rise with you in our baptism and walk in the freedom of your forgiveness. Grant us, good Lord. That we may set our minds on things above and not on earthly things, serving others as we have been served by you. Grant us, good Lord. That we may dwell with you forever in the new creation as citizens of the heavenly Jerusalem, together with all the saints. Grant us, good Lord. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises. We are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you.